How's it going guys? I'm Josh and today I'm going to talk about my Lightroom Classic workflow. Now there are two parts of the workflow. There's the actual editing of photos and then there's everything that leads up to that point. The importing, there's the organizing, the selecting, and then the space saving aspect of working with your photos. And that's what I want to focus on in today's video. If you want to save time, energy, and computer space using Lightroom Classic CC, this video is for you. If you've ever imported 500 photos and just felt overwhelmed how to get it down to the best ones you want to edit, this video is for you. Before we jump in, two things. First, today's video is actually sponsored by Adobe Students, and I couldn't think of a more perfect partnership teaching Lightroom sponsored by Adobe. It's beautiful. I'm so thrilled to be working with them. Second thing, this is a beginner and intermediate tutorial, but if you're completely unfamiliar with Lightroom, I actually have a nine hour long photography masterclass with a whole section on using Lightroom that introduces you to the basics. And if you're curious to check that out, link will be in the description down below, as well as a link to download Lightroom Classic CC. Also, if you're more advanced and want to skip certain sections of this, there's going to be a video directory in the description down below, so you can skip around to the parts you want to go to first. Now let's jump in. Part one, let's talk about importing. Now when you get home from a big photo shoot, it's so tempting just to sloppily rush through the importing process and get to editing your shots. But if you do this properly, you're gonna save hours and hours of editing and organizing time. So let me walk you through really quickly how I like to do it. Starting off, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my external hard drive because that's where I store my photos. And I'm gonna plug in my SD card into my computer or just jam those photos into your computer, however you normally do. And typically the importing menu should pop up in Lightroom. If it doesn't, just go ahead and hit that import button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. A quick side note on using an external hard drive. Photos are big, they take up lots of space in your computer, and as you build a larger and larger image category, you're gonna run out of space in your computer and have to do this eventually, so why not start now? And I have a whole article, courtesy of Adobe, on how to migrate your entire Lightroom library onto an external hard drive. Definitely check that out, link in the description if you're curious. Now that we're in this menu, we're gonna go ahead and import all of our shots. Now, it's tempting to sort through them in this menu, don't do that, it's way easier to do this later. So I don't want to import any of my videos. So what I'm going to do is going to press the option button and then uncheck videos. So now I have all of my photos checked, none of my videos. And before I actually press the import button right over here, a few things I want to walk you through. So first of all, copy is DNG versus copy. Copy is DNG is a slower importing process, but makes your Lightroom catalog run faster in the long haul. So I highly recommend that if you're patient, if you're not, copy is perfectly fine. Second, right over here is where we import onto our external hard drive as opposed to our actual computer. That's very important. Then we have don't import from suspected duplicates. It's good to check this box if you're importing from the same SD card multiple times because there will be duplicates then. Second thing, if you want to back up your photos, which I highly recommend you do, you can make a second copy to another external drive, your actual computer hard drive, whatever you want. I'm not doing this because I back up all my photos under the cloud. I do highly recommend you have a second backup of all your images. Don't rely on one hard drive for your life's work. Next up, we have add to collections, and this is one of the most important parts of the importing process. So we're actually gonna make this part 1A, adding to collections. Collections are a phenomenal way to keep your photos organized, and they're kind of like Spotify playlists for your photos. You can put your photos in multiple collections, just like playlists, but you're never actually affecting the source file, or you're not duplicating the file, you're just keeping it in multiple places for better organization. There are individual collection sets or folders of collections. Now I have one of these collection sets for each year I shoot and then individual collections for each day I shoot or trip that I take. There are tons of different ways to use collections. Your main objective here though is if you wanna find a photo you shot three years ago as quick as possible, you should have a collection system that helps you do that. Now that that's all explained, I'm gonna actually create a collection for my photos. So I'm gonna hit the plus button right here and I'm gonna name this one New Orleans Restaurant Shoot. Part 1B, applying developing settings. Now, this allows you to apply the same edit to all of your photos you're importing. And this is one of the biggest time savers. It helps make selecting your favorite shots easier because they already look closer to the final form of being fully edited. And sometimes a photo doesn't really look good until it's been touched up a little bit and then all of its life really comes out. But to give you guys an idea of what these shots look like pre and post punch, this is with nothing. And then once we add a little bit of clarity and contrast, to actually make a preset, we're gonna go ahead and make the edits we wanna genericize on one of our photos. So I'm gonna bump up my clarity and bump up my contrast. Make sure that this left-hand bar is here. And we're gonna press the plus button on the presets, create preset. And naturally, you're gonna have all of these checked. And these are gonna be the components of the preset. So I'm gonna check none. Now we want this preset to only include the contrast and the clarity, none of the other edits on the photo. So I'm gonna press clarity, contrast, and name this 
Clarity Contrast, something very intuitive, and Create. So now we have this preset that we can apply in the importing process that's gonna save us bushels of time. Now, just to give you guys a quick rundown on some of my presets, got a cold pink light that works really nicely on landscapes, Contrast Punch, which has no clarity, Film style makes my shots look a little bit more like a filmy image by adding noise and making the blacks a little bit gray. Yeah, a bunch of things like this, all very simple stuff that are gonna save me a lot of time in the long run because having to scroll down all the way here and find vignetting and adjust this takes five seconds. Pressing vignette takes a half a second. Now add that for 100 photos and you're saving a lot of time. So make as many presets as you can. They're gonna do you a real solid. And finally, it takes us to part 1C, finishing off the import, just go ahead and press that import button and you're good to go. Before we move on to part two, make sure all these shots are fully imported. Go grab yourself a slice of pizza or something. Part two, selection. When I shoot digital, I shoot a ton of images. To get the perfect street photo, I might take 75 shots of the same scene and choosing the best one can be tedious. Fortunately, my system I've developed here helps you go through all the shots as quickly as possible, choosing the best ones to edit and deleting all the bad ones that you don't even want to save on your computer. Now, this process might seem more exhaustive than what you're used to, but it saves you tons of time and energy and I think it's very worthwhile. It comes quick once you get used to it. Quick side note on deleting images. Not all bad images are worth deleting. Sometimes a photo that's out of focus or poorly composed catches a great moment or is nice just to save for the archives. You don't have to necessarily edit it, but just hold on to it. If you have even the slightest hesitation to delete an image, don't delete it. Now for this restaurant shoot, I have no attachment to these images and I'm gonna end up deleting 80% of them because anything that's not good, no one has any use for. However, if I was shooting a family reunion that's my own, I might wanna hold on to most of these images because these are relics of relatives that might not be around forever. So think about the likelihood of your subjects dying soon and factor that in. Phase one, cut the crap. We're gonna begin by filtering out all of the crappy images, which includes anything that is out of focus, poorly composed, or just an obviously bad duplicate image. This is a really quick process. I rarely spend more than three seconds on each image, as you will too once you're familiar with these keyboard shortcuts. Starting off with some preliminary settings, we're gonna to wanna to bring down the attribute bar. And to do this, press the backslash button on your keyboard, and this nice bar is gonna pop up with tons of different organizational methods for your photos. Now we have flags, and these are gonna be the main thing we use to select our shots. So there are three flags. There's the flag, unflagged, and rejected. By default, all of our photos right now are unflagged, but to change that, you can flag an image by pressing P, you can reject an image by pressing X, and you can remove a flag by pressing U. So that's now unflagged. So think of it this way, P is pick, X is reject, U is unpick. Now with that, we're gonna go ahead and start selecting our images. Our reject pile is gonna be the ones we're eventually gonna delete off our hard drive, while most of our flagged ones will be the ones that we edit. Now sometimes an image just isn't worth deleting, but is still one for the archives. These are the ones that we leave unflagged. So this attribute bar shows which images you're actually gonna see down below. When you reject an image, you're not deleting it, you're just putting a temporary label so we can make those adjustments later. In this attribute bar, we're gonna turn on flagged and unflagged images, meaning we won't be able to see any of the rejected shots. Now this is really helpful because we wanna sort through all of our images and don't wanna see an image anymore, we just reject it and it's now gone. If you do reject an image and you say, you know what, I actually like that one, just hit Command Z and it'll come back up as unflagged. If you wanna flag it again, X to reject. In this first phase, all we're gonna do is reject the bad ones. I have one hand on the X button of the keyboard, the other hand on the left and right arrow keys. So now I can go really fast, just hitting X on the ones I don't like, navigating past the ones that I do like. In this process, I went from 428 images to 158, and now I can really focus on those good ones with a little bit more detail. Before we move on, a couple quick keyboard shortcuts to refine your process. When you have one image selected, if you wanna go back to seeing all of them, just press the G button on your keyboard and double click to open it up big again. Another thing is when I edit my photos, I want as much of the screen to be devoted to the image as possible and nothing else. So to do that, you wanna make sure you close all of these unnecessary tabs out 
and you can just press the arrow key to collapse them and now the image is much larger and you have more screen time for this. Another great shortcut, if you press the L button on your keyboard, it'll darken everything on the screen except for your image, which is super helpful. Rule of thumb for this phase is err on the side of caution. If you're even slightly hesitant to reject a photo, hold on to it and look at it later in phase two, which we're moving on to now, flagging the phenomenal. And yes, that alliteration was totally forced. Starting over from the first shot, we're gonna focus on favoriting the good ones. And a reminder, that's the P button on your keyboard. We're gonna look at our duplicates a little more closely and continue to reject the ones we realize aren't that good and remove the slightly higher tier of crap. Also, some tips on narrowing down duplicates. If you have a bunch of images of the same moment that we feel are redundant, cut it down to the best ones. So to do this, I like to select all of them and then keep scrolling through, sizing one up against another, removing anything that's inferior until I have it down to two or three. Ideally, we can get each duplicate series down to one image, but oftentimes you're stuck with two or three, that's totally fine. We'll make that final selection process when we fully edited the shots. In this phase, I went from 158 images to 78. So these 78 are the ones that I'm actually going to edit now. Now the 80 images that remain unpicked, those are gonna stay on my hard drive, but I don't think they're good enough to actually edit. Maybe one day later on if I find a need to. Now a quick warning, this process is exhausting and sometimes you look through your shots and you're like, okay, these four are the best ones and I just wanna edit them. So don't be afraid to take breaks from this selection process to go and edit your favorite ones. I think it breaks it up really nicely and make sure you never get tired of it. But the reason why I strongly encourage you to do this process is because sometimes images you don't realize are that great actually come out and reveal themselves as great once you've really looked at them for a little while. And this is really awesome for familiarizing yourself with your entire set of shots. As you get more comfortable with this process, I like to combine phase one and phase two. So I'm picking my favorites and rejecting the bad ones all together in the same sweep. And this takes us to phase number three. We're now gonna double check. So sometimes you're going really fast and you wanna just make sure you didn't miss anything bad. Because we're sorting through these images super fast, sometimes we miss something and just to be super thorough, I like to turn off of my flagged images and now I'm just looking at my unflagged images and I like to go through them really quickly just to make sure there's none that are actually nice gems that I actually do want to edit. You can also do this with your rejected images if you'd like before deleting them, but this is all up to you. Maybe you want to skip both of these steps because you are so freaking accurate and much respect to people like you. Now this takes us to phase four, our final favorites. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the unflagged images so that we're only seeing flagged photos. And you could go ahead and edit all of these shots. Personally, I like to add one more tier of filtration just to make sure I've got my favorite selected. For our final tier of selection, we're gonna add the five star label to all the images we actually want to edit. So to do this, just press the five button on your keyboard, that'll turn on five stars. If you ever wanna remove the stars on a photo, you can just press the zero button on your keyboard. Now, once we have all the shots that we really like and have the five star label on them, we're gonna go back into our attributes tab and make sure we're only seeing our flagged images as well as those with five stars. So just press that five star up there. And these are the images we're actually going to edit. If you ever wanna stop seeing only these selected attributes, you can turn them off individually within the attributes bar or just close the attributes bar entirely and you'll still see all of the labels that you've placed on these images. And now our final phase, phase number five, clearing space. Now, reminder that deleting your shots from a collection is like deleting it from a playlist while well, deleting from your hard drive is actually clearing the space. If you actually want to remove them from your hard drive to save the space, we're going to go into all photographs and now find those photos you want to delete. Make sure you turn on attributes again so you're just seeing the rejected ones and we're going to select the ones we want to delete. So you could do command A to select all of them. If you want to just select a bunch, select the first one from the group, scroll down to the last one, press the shift button and select the last one with a click and now we have everything in between selected. Now when you do backspace, this is gonna remind you that you're actually deleting them from your disk. So deleting from the disk removes the shots for good. So be very careful. Reminder that this step is completely optional. And if you're working with a client, you definitely wanna wait until your job is 100% complete before deleting any images. Cause you never know what a client's gonna ask for. Quick recap of the phases. Phase one is rejecting all of the bad ones. Phase two is selecting all of your favorites. You can combine these two steps if you want. Phase three is double checking, which could be of the rejected images as well as the unflagged images. And phase four, selecting all of your favorite favorites with the five star rating. 
And then phase five is actually deleting the rejected images. And that's that. If your workflow differs from mine, or if you have any tips, tricks, or just want to share how this helped you, please let me know in the comments down below. Always great to share this stuff with the community. Secondly, huge thank you to Adobe Students for sponsoring today's video. I spend the majority of my time on the computer in Lightroom, so it's such a treat getting to work with them. And if you want to download Lightroom Classic CC, link will be in the description down below. And that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you eventually. But first, a skate clip to wrap this video up. Thank <laughs> you.